Hi team, I hope everyone's okay. And uh, welcome to the Gross Tribe presentation. Um, today we're going to be talking about uh, creating a killer listing. And not just a killer listing, it's a killer listing that converts better than your competitors. Um, so we're clearly looking at the competitors' um, listings when we're doing our analysis and, and building out our own listing. Um, so that's uh, that's basically where we're going to go from here. Um, so uh, let's just jump straight. I'm going to break it down into each of the sections, as you'll see. So hopefully that'll make sense. So uh, let's just jump straight in. All right, creating a killer listing section by section. So what are the components of a listing? Well, Clearly, we've got the title, and the title is probably the most important um, aspect from Amazon's point of view, um, not necessarily from the potential buyer's point of view, but certainly from Amazon's point of view. Um, the, the title is, is absolutely key, and I'll go into why um, sort of pretty shortly. Um, so the title needs to have your keywords, uh, and it should describe your product in less than 200 characters. Uh, the next section that everybody sees is uh, the bullet points. Now, there are five bullet points where you can highlight the benefits of your product. And, and this should also include um, your product keywords, uh, once you've done your keyword research. Um, images. Clearly, this is from a, a buyer's perspective, the most important aspect um, from your listing. Because... That is the first thing they look at. Uh, when they're putting in a search term, they will get shown a number of different results. And as they're scrolling down, they'll be looking at the images and not necessarily reading the titles. Um, when I'm doing my buying as well as research, I'll be looking at the images just to make sure it's the, the product that I'm looking for. And then I shall scan over the, the product title um, just to get a better idea of what it is. So, and then we've got the description. Um, the, the description, you can um, obviously add a, little, add a lot more detail. You've got 2,000 characters here to actually um, describe what the product does in more detail um, and include some of the features of the, of the product. Previously, we were talking about the benefits. This is a good place to, to add some of the features, and we'll go into to some of that shortly. So there's one thing underpinning this, and I've been saying that um, for the last few minutes, um, and that's keywords, okay? Keywords are so important when it comes to creating your listing um, because it goes everywhere, apart from images, clearly, um, but it goes everywhere. And, and the Amazon algorithm will look at your keywords to determine whether they are going to put your listing in front of a potential buyer. And they're doing that by matching up their, or using their A9 algorithm, using their algorithm to actually match up the prospective buyer's search term with your keywords. And if there's a good match, if there's good relevancy, um, your product will get shown to that potential buyer. So keywords is the underpinning um, force behind everything. So that's basically where we're going to start. Okay, so let's jump into keywords. Where do I start? Now, there's two ways that I'm doing my keyword research, manually and with tools. Um, so let's go and have a look at the manual research to start with. So the first place I start is actually on the Amazon search bar, um, believe it or not. So I shall um, open up Amazon. And in this case, you can see I've got a copper bracelet uh, that I'm searching for. And if you just leave copper bracelet there, it's going to give us a copper bracelet four, and it's going to give the most popular search terms that Amazon see. Okay, so they're going to suggest keywords for us, uh, which is great. So you can see we've got copper bracelet for men um, at the top here. Then we've got copper bracelet for women. And then we've got copper bracelet for arthritis. Okay, these are... There's a superb keywords that we need to be pulling out. And once we've got this, we need to be creating a master list of keywords. 
and we need to make this one big keyword. Now, I say this to a story um, a number of times that when I first started out, I my first product was stainless steel measuring spoons. Um, no secret, no surprise uh, for those that have been following for a number of years. But I was told to go and find some keywords for my product. Um, so I started to do my own research, um, and this is without any tools. This was the manual um, way, and, and I come up with about 20, tool, uh, 20, 20 keywords, something like that. So I went back to the guy the next time, so I've got, got my keywords. Uh, I've got 20 keywords, and he said, excellent, excellent, good start. Now go and find the other 980. Well, you know, I nearly fell on the floor. 980 keywords for stainless steel measuring spoons, impossible. Well, then he introduced me to the tools, uh, and you'll see shortly how easy it is to actually get these keywords together. But anyway, you need to start to create your master keyword list. Okay, and this is a very good place to start. Um, once you go on here, you can do the, the ABC trick. In other words, like a copper bracelet, space A, and then it will give you all of the relevant uh, suggested keywords for copper bracelet, anything starting with A, then you do it the B, then the C. Okay, so that's, that's a really good place to start. So where else do we look? We have a look at our competitors listing, and I'll do this over the first probably two or three pages. Um, here's an extract from page one, um, and I shall have a look through here. So let's have a look, see what we've got. I'm going to zoom in, see what we've got here. Um, as we're moving along. So you can see here we've got twisted copper bracelet. I'll, I'll potentially use the word twisted, but definitely arthritis. Okay, I need to zoom back out and get the next one. What have we got? Um, we've got elegant, pure copper. Yep, I'll use that therapy. Okay, therapy, superb. Keyword. Okay, for this particular product we're looking here. Pain relief as well. Great, great, great keywords to have on my list. Uh, let's have a look, see how else we got. Um, copper magnetic bracelet. Excellent. I'm liking it. We're starting to build up some good, really, really core keywords here simply by looking at the competitors. Now, one would assume that some of these listings, the owners have actually done some keyword research. There's no guarantees that all of them have, but um, you, you can assume that some of them at least have gone through this exercise where they've looked at the keywords. So there's no, no point in reinventing the wheel. Let's use their knowledge and research, and, and let's take some of their keywords that have already done uh, the research on. So we've got another one down there, healing therapy. That's pretty good. Um, bangle, which is an alternative word for bracelet, obviously. Um, what else we got? Over on the right hand side, heavyweight copper bracelet for arthritis. So we've got a number of different keywords. And what I would do now is I would actually open up some of these and see what uh, see, what, see what the more descriptive keywords are in the bullet points uh, from a benefits point of view. So again, all this time you're building up your list, you're building up your list. Okay, so right, so that's that's the manual search. Um, and obviously, you can just like think about other uh, potential um, ones as well. Copper bracelet for um, um, wrist pain, um, stuff like that. So we've got tools now. So let's have a research with tools. I'm going to be using the AZ Optimizer. Um, this is a, a paid option. And this is my go-to tool at the moment. And this is why it's highlighted. Uh, what else we've got? Sonar. Um, Sonar is a free version uh, of our software. We're going to have a quick look at that. And uh, you can Google others, and there are plenty of others out there. I'm not going to go into too many because it, there are just too many tools out there to, to mention. Um, but I'm going to be using the optimizer, the AZ optimizer, uh, for this next section. We'll have a quick look at Sonar as well. So... Here's the uh, interface. I've actually logged in. Um, this is the interface for the AC optimizer. Um, and it's this section here where we've got the generator tools. So we jump into generator tools and we find our keyword generator. Okay, so the cheap keyword generator. We then put in copper bracelet down the bottom here. Look. Okay. 
and we then go and retrieve all of the keywords. In other words, you press the button, it goes off and finds all of the keywords for you. So you can see here now that we've got 175 keywords listed for us uh, without even like, thinking about it. So let's have a look at some of these. So we've got copper bracelet. Searches per month. And let me explain what searches per month really means. It means the amount of times this particular keyword, copper bracelet, has been searched for inside Amazon. Not Google, not Bing, not Amazon, not any of these other platforms, purely inside Amazon. Okay. So what else have we got? We've got men's copper bracelet. 101,000. That first one, copper bracelet, was 220,000 times it's been searched for. Um, so I just want to go back one, sorry. Um, so over on the right hand side, I got to ask the question over the weekend, um, last weekend, what's the score? Um, well, this is not anything to do with Amazon, this is purely the AZ optimizer giving you a score of relevancy. So we put in a couple of bracelet for our key or core keyword that we're searching for. And it's giving us a, a relevant score with respect to what the results are coming up as. Now, I would use all of these keywords, apart from when I get down to about zero point something, um, I wouldn't necessarily do that because they're, they're less relevant, um, as you'll see when you look through this. Okay. So... What I would do now is use some of those top keywords that we found and just repeat the process. So we know that men's copper bracelet, 101,000 searches a month. So I would now put that in to the keyword generator and press retrieve and see what results we get there. Okay, so we've refined our keyword research. We've got men's copper bracelet. And let's dive into the results. So we can now see that we've got 28 new results there based upon our new core keyword, which is men's copper bracelet. Now, again, on the top here, we've got men's copper bracelet. No, no surprise there. We know that's 101,000 because we saw it on the previous search. Um, but again, we're getting some, some different results here. We've got copper bracelet men's. Again, I would use that. I would then use something like copper armband, pure copper bracelet okay men's copper magnetic bracelets and you just repeat the process over and over and over again such you got this like big master list clearly you're going to get some some uh, sort of repetitive keywords in there but if you can you can basically download this list as a csv file i then combine all of those individual lists into one list in in a spreadsheet and I, it's then from that point, it's very easy to eliminate duplicates. Okay. So that's basically how I'm building up my master list. Copper bracelet health, uh, another excellent keyword that we can look at. Um, but you can see down here, we're getting less and less relevant. But I still think these are, are pretty good keywords to have. Um, copper cuff bracelets. Yes, I would still use that. African copper bracelet, yeah, potentially, that's all still good. Okay, so we're building up our key key list, or keyword list, and that master list nicely, and, and potentially we're going to get um, several hundred keywords in there. I'm not saying you need to go off and find a thousand keywords, but you do need to find quite a few keywords. More than the 20 I found when I first done my research for the, for the spoons. All right, so step two, the 4K generator. Okay, again, inside the AZ optimizer. Now, inside the back end of your listing, you do have the opportunity to add in 4,000 characters um, of keywords, or your keywords make up 4,000 characters. Okay, so basically generate them and add them. And there's no way that I could sit down and do this manually and just manually think of uh, the 4,000 characters worth of keywords. But the AC optimizer can do that for us. So here's the tips on how to do that. We need to, and it says here as well, okay, a minimum of five fields must be filled in, 
right? If you see receive the red error, take a look at the video above. So basically, once you're in here, you can actually read that. Um, so watch the video to understand what you need to do. Okay, so. Um, we've got here, we've got the five here. We've got copper bracelet, copper bracelet for pain relief, arthritis bracelet, magnetic copper bracelet, copper men's bracelet. So we've got a variation on the theme here. So we've got copper in there a few times. We've got bracelet in there a few times. But we've got some other keywords um, at, at the end of um, the, the beginning of some of these keywords. Let's have a look. So once you've got those five in there, you then press uh, sort of the run button or retrieve, and it will come up with the results. So let's have a look, see what we've got here. So it's got five sections. I've, I've only taken a screenshot of what I could fit onto the page. Um, but you can see this like in, basically in, in four sections. So you've got 1,000 characters in the top, 1,000 characters here, 1,000 characters, and then basically to, into the four. Uh, sections down there okay so what i want to do now is create the, the, the what we've been building beforehand up until this point is our master keyword list in other words our, our main keyword with hundreds and hundreds of keywords in okay inside the az optimizer <coughs> excuse me it gives you the chance to build what they call the master list now this is the master list that i would use for the main keywords in my listing okay so let's have a look so as we're actually you you can click on any of these words and it will automatically put them up into the master keyword list here okay so you can see here the bracelet so if i click on bracelet now it's going to pop it up the top there which is done okay and then i can go through each of these 4,000 characters or the uh, the sections, the four sections, and basically click on any of the words, and that's going to pop them up into this top master list. You can download all of these, okay? You can download all of these um, into a spreadsheet, into a Word file, whatever you want, so that you can use them, copy and paste them, copy and paste them later on. Because once you move out of this into the next section, uh, you'll lose this information. So it's always a good idea to download the master list, download the 4K list, okay? And you can see here, the master list, you've got 1,500 characters worth that you can add in. Uh, just for this exercise, I've just got 191. Okay, but you can see what I've got here. Bracelet, copper, magnetic, men's arthritis, pure wrist, pain, therapy. Uh, and we've got some sort of pretty good keywords in there that I'm thinking from a buyer's perspective now, what am I likely going to put in for a search term if I'm going to buy one of these items? If I'm in the market and I want to, if I'm in the market to buy a copper bracelet, what am I likely to put in the search term? So that from now on, I'm thinking from a buyer's perspective, um, not from a seller's point of view. From a seller's point of view, it's, it's very easy to get into that trap with respect to keyword stuff. It, you know, as many keywords as I can think of, you know, without actually making it a plain English um, when, when you're reading this. So you need to write it with respect to thinking you're a buyer. Okay, so that's why I'm so I'm putting some of these keywords in the top here. Okay, so you can see that now where we've got this um, top master list, and you can download that, and it's basically built up by clicking on any of these keywords as we put in the top there. Okay, sonar. Let's have a quick look at sonar. Um, I believe this is sonar hyphen tools uh, when you do the search. Okay, so if you do a Google search for sonar hyphen tools, you'll come up with this. Now, again, you've got um, copper bracelet in here as our keyword. I'm then going to go and ping 
on this one and it's going to give us the search results okay so let's have a look at see how sonar presents us with keywords that we can use for our our listing okay so we've got our keyword list here on the left hand side um some similar type of keywords that we're going to get clearly uh, copper bracelet copper bracelet for women copper bracelet for men uh, copper magnetic bracelet copper bracelet blanks um copper ankle bracelet uh, that could be a good one um, we've probably got that from the other one but um you can see our list is down here anyway um what else we got we've got frequent words now this is quite a useful little aspect with inside sonar they get, basically what it's doing is he's searching through this keyword list and it's got 628 found um but it's also giving us the, the most frequently found words within the keyword list so we can see here bracelet four copper magnetic magnetic bracelet okay we're over on this right hand box now for men therapy for women arthritis pure copper okay so we've got all of these frequent words and obviously the ones at the top are the most frequent with uh copper healing um scattered in there a few times so which is useful um, because again we can use this to um think about from a bias perspective what are people putting in and clearly bracelet four now it could be bracelet that copper magnetic bracelet for wrist pain relief okay that could be our first long tail keyword for example let's have a look see what else they give us they're giving us relevant products so we can actually go off and find alternative products based upon our search term which was copper bracelet right and go and have a look on these and these are all clickable so we can go and click on any of these products and this is similar to what we were doing on our manual research going and have a look at the competitors listings and that's going to give us an idea of what keyword next to put into the sonar tool okay so exactly the same as what we've done before rinse and repeat rinse and repeat rinse and repeat and, and just build up your list there here we don't have the number of searches per month but it does give us the search volume so at the top here we've got three bars okay so this is the most popular search and as we're coming down it's got less information or the bars get smaller and smaller as as we come down okay so that's the only disadvantage um from sonar i guess it doesn't actually give you the search volume per month okay so we've now got our master list and i've got um sort of several hundred um keywords that i've downloaded into into this um spreadsheet and what i would do then is sort by searches per month okay now I've, what i've done is i've switched back to my search results from uh, the az optimizer uh, i just wanted to show you that sonar um just as a as a free option so we've got some um, you'll get our keywords down on the left hand side and you can see we've got uh, some relevant ones down here um i haven't done the the duplicate trick yet so you can see uh, lines 15 and 16 they're the same so we've got men's copper bracelet um in fact 14 15 and 16 is the same men's copper bracelet and we've got the same down here arthritis bracelet um i would i would need to to get rid of those duplicates um you can see our searches per month uh, which is relevant um, and these are really good it's good information to have because i know that if i'm using um, copper bracelet arthritis that I'm getting at 103 searches per month for that particular long term key or keyword. Okay, this is a keyword. A keyword doesn't matter how many words are in it, as long as it's like copper bracelet arthritis, then that, that's one to look class as one keyword on its own. Okay, um, and you can see our scores um, over on the right hand side here. Now, this is a good example here. Um, we've got a score of uh, 0 0.4. Let's have a look at see what that is. Um, Danbury Mint. No, I probably would not use that. What it probably is, it could well be a brand name for this particular product somewhere uh, along the line, and it's come up with in a search term. Um, would I use that? No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't use that clearly. So that's a good example of having a low score um, because it's 
got a low relevancy um, to the keyword search so, that we're looking for. Okay, right, so let's whiz on. This next section um, is all about the title and how to build a great title. So this is the best place to tell your customers what the product is, clearly. Yeah, your title is the biggest weighting when it comes to keyword ranking. Now, when I'm talking about keyword ranking, this is all about the A9 algorithm. A9 algorithm will look at your title to start with, and it will index 100%. What I mean by index is it will recognize the keywords that you've put into the title, match that up with respect to the pot uh, potential buyer's search term, okay? Um, and what they're doing is they're, they're, they're looking at 100% of the words or characters in your title. So that's what that means. It's not a place to do keyword stuffing. Okay, so in other words, all of those keywords that we've done there, don't just like put them in randomly and like just make sure that they're in there. Your title needs to read like a proper sentence. Yeah, so if I'm coming along and I've, I've found the product, and I've liked the image, therefore I've clicked on the product, I want to be able to read that title and understand what the product is without getting confused because all of these keywords are stuffed in there and not making sense. So it's not a place for keyword stuffing. So let's have a look, see what Amazon say. These are the rules and regulations or the terms of service by Amazon. So the length should not be more than 200 characters, including spaces. Do not include subjective terms such as hot or best, for example. Do not include promotional terms such as sale or free or clearance. And do not include price or quantity. Okay, that's important because we can actually change the price on the back end. We can have a sale. And if you've got your, your price as part of your title, you're sort of like tied to that. Um, do not include special characters, symbols like at or trademark or, or copyright. Okay. So good attributes. What are the attributes of a great title? Include your brand name. Basically, it looks professional. Place the most important keywords as early as possible. The reason is because on a mobile device, it's only the first 80 characters that get shown. Include as many relevant keywords as you can reasonably fit, or that can reasonably fit. Yeah, in other words, this is what we're talking about like keyword stuffing. Don't keyword stuff it make it read like a sentence that's what i'm saying on the next one write it for real people to understand it will convert better make sure everything in your title is relevant to your product okay don't don't mention the competitor's product. You're not selling the competitor's product. It's your product. Make it relevant to your product. Include benefits. Sell a solution. You know, if, we, if, we, if I've got arthritis in a wrist, for example, sell a solution for that. You know, it's a magnetic copper bracelet for pain relief, arthritis, arthritic pain relief. You know, so you need to think about crafting your title that way no need to repeat words okay you've only got 200 characters use them wisely when the algorithm comes around and has a look at your title if you've got copper 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 in there it'll only recognize it once it won't think oh it's got three coppers here it must be really relevant and it doesn't work like that it only recognizes one so if you've got three in there you're just wasting space okay so let's have a look at how to create or craft out your listing and the title without AC Optimizer. So on the left-hand side over here, um, we've got our all keywords. 
right? So you would add your master keyword list from here. Okay, and this would be the master keyword list that we generated in the previous section of the AZ Optimizer, remember? So let's have a look at doing that. So here we are. So we've now added our master keyword list into this lot. Paste all the keywords here um, on the left-hand side. And as we start to build out our title, it takes the words from our keywords list here and it drops them in and it color codes them okay and as it does that it moves those keywords into the used keywords section now i like this because you can keep a track of the keywords that you're using okay and it's clear here you can see how that uh, we've actually started to think about what our title is going to be copper magnetic bracelet for arthritis pain relief hyphen and then i'll go on to complete that title uh with more keywords with respect to pain relief arthritis um and stuff like this but without potentially um repeating words unless i will repeat words if it makes sense okay but i'll, I'll try not to Okay, so this is really useful um, because you can keep track of all of the keywords that you're using. Well, in this next section, we're going to be talking about bullet points. Okay, so there are five bullet points. Your bullet points are the first thing the customer will see after your title. They're right below your title. So the bullet points... Um, to pay that they should be pay a very important role in the success of your listing so what are the good attributes of a great bullet point it's a place to tell your prospective buyer where they should buy your pro why they should buy your product emphasize the benefit the product provides don't forget, don't forget you know if they've got a They've got an issue. We've got a solution for their issue, their problem. Okay, we're selling a solution. Okay, we're not selling the the fact that it's copper. We're selling the fact that it's um, it gives you pain relief. Okay, our product will provide you pain relief. It's a it's not necessarily a cure, but it'll make you feel better. Okay, so that's the benefit of the products. Include key features as well. Okay, it's got magnetics. It's got magnets in it, so we'll, we'll mention this, the the fact that it's got magnets in it. We may fa we may actually include the fact that it's uh, pure copper or ninety nine point nine percent pure copper. That's a feature. That's not a benefit. That's a feature. Okay. So sometimes it's, it's a good point to to actually mention some of these features. Um, okay. So identify competitors' weaknesses. How do you know what your competitors' weaknesses are? Well, you need to go back in and have a look at the listings. Open up the listings and then scroll down to the bottom and have a look at their ratings or their reviews and have a look at the one-star and two-star reviews. It may say that the cop was too thin and the mag magnets weren't really strong enough or it didn't come in a nice box or it, stuff like this. Once you've identified those weaknesses, you can actually talk to your supplier and say, you know what, this I want to change. Can you change it? I want to, I want to make it thicker. And do you have any stronger magnets? Um, do you have uh, a nice presentation, a um, little felt bag or something like this? Okay. So all of those aspects you can actually pick up on to improve your product differentiate your product from the others and again you can do that by looking at the weaknesses you can have a look at the the product listings and say okay everyone's offering one here i'm going to offer two okay and i'm going to offer two at 1.75 the price of one for example okay add a guarantee that removes all risk for the buyer okay make it a, a a brainless decision for them when they come across your product they think you know what this this makes sense to buy this product because one images look good you know you've described all the benefits of buying your product and wearing your product or using your product and you've had a guarantee on there if you're not you've not 100 satisfied 
send it back. We will give you 100% money back guarantee. Stuff like this, okay? So it's important to use all of the five bullet points and capitalize the first main keywords in each bullet point. Why? Because it stands out, okay? So you're trying to draw the eye onto the important parts of the bullet points. And if they're capitalized to start with, and make sure that they're good main keywords as well, that people will understand that and they'll read that and pick that up. Because not everybody will sit down and read the listing word for word. They'll scan down. And if they scan down, it's easy to scan through. And you've got some highlighted words or capitalized words. It's easier to pick up on those as opposed to if they're not capitalized. So we've been talking about the, um, the algorithm, the A9 algorithm, um, and, and where to put your keywords. Now, in the bullet points, we know, because we've been doing some testing on this, that 70 to 80% of the words in your bullet points do get indexed by Amazon. In other words, the A9 algorithm will check 70 to 80% of your keywords to match up with the buyer's search term. Okay, we know that the title is 100%. It's now come down to the bullet points. We've got 70 to 80% of those keywords will get indexed. Um, so just make sure that we are using keywords in our bullet points. So back to our listing optimizer. Okay, so again, we've got our um, keywords in here. We've already used some of those up in our title. And what I'm going to do now is continue to build out my bullet points. Now you can see here that uh, if I zoom in slightly, that our bullet point is reduce, and you can see that we've got some capitalized words here, reduce pain, fatigue, and muscle tension with our extra strong magnet embedded copper bracelet. Okay, so we've got some keywords in here. We know they're keywords because they're highlighted, but not every single thing needs to be a keyword. It needs to make sense because we're trying to sell the product. We're trying to convince that potential buyer to buy our product. Okay, so it needs to make sense. It needs to read correctly and make it plain English as well. Don't put too much mumbo jumbo in there. Okay, um, got a question in here. It's like, does Amazon treat words like two and four? Does it index them? No, it sort of uh, ignores those because they're um, just connecting words. Okay, so it will not index anything and at with uh, things like that so this is why i never put them as keywords anyway because they're sort of ignored and again you don't want to be putting too many of those in your key in your title because you've only got 200 characters and if you've got full of with that and and fours then it will sort of uh, take up some of your space uh, when you're crafting out um your 200 character title now in the bullet points, you have 500 characters to use. I suggest you go fairly close to that, um, simply because they're indexed. It's, it's keywords are indexing. Previously, um, the, the I9 algorithm did not index the bullet points as much as what they are now. Uh, consequently, I, it, it was my tendency to keep the bullet points shorter, um, simply because it was easier to read okay, and easier for people to scan down. Um, but as it stands at the moment, because... It is indexed. I want to make sure that I'm getting my keywords in the bullet points where I can. Okay. So this is a, um, an example from one of the top sellers. Uh, let's have a look and see how they're doing here. Um, I want to try and critique this a little bit. Um, extra strength magnets. All right, that's fair enough. They've got capitalization at the start with. And they've got 3,500 gauss each i know what this is i'm an engineer um but uh if my mom was coming along she, she wouldn't have a clue what this is gauss um is that a small bird that lives up in scotland I, I don't know no that's a grouse okay this is gauss now gauss is the measure of strength of magnets okay is it relevant no this is not relevant. It's going to be indexed. I very, very much doubt it. Um, I would actually remove this. Okay. Um, now, what they're playing on here 
is obviously they've done their research on the competitors' listings where they've said the magnets are not very good, they're a bit weak. So they go, don't waste time with weaker hermatite magnets or plain bio-negative ion bands. Use our product as a stronger, basically. But what they do have in here is pretty good keywords. Yeah, reduce neuro neuropathy pain. I probably said that wrong. Um, fatigue and muscle tension. We had some of those in our our um, sort of title actually. Improve blood circulation, energy balance, and sleep. All right. So what they're doing here is they've got some um, sort of stuff in here that I would certainly remove. I wouldn't necessarily go a waste of time on on weak magnets, but the rest of this stuff I really like. Okay, now here's a feature where they're talking about pure ninety nine point nine percent copper. Okay, that's a feature, not a benefit. Um, it's sort of okay, but I would probably lead with a benefit and then go on to the feature. Um, not the cheap stuff found. Oops, sorry. Um, not the cheap stuff found in many other bracelets. Again, they're having a pop at the competitors, uh, which is okay, but what I tend to do is just focus on creating my bullet points the best I can without mentioning the, some of the other products. Okay. Enjoy maximum health benefits. This is pretty good. Of solid, pure copper in every single link. Okay. So they're telling you that the clasp is not 99% copper bracelet, um, copper. Um, it's made of less copper or an alternative material. Full bracelet design. They're telling us what is is full design. They're also telling us the length, 21 centimeters, width, 1.2 centimeters. Okay. So they know, the potential buyer, that if you've got a big risk, this is going to be okay. If you've got a small risk, you're going to potentially lose it. Okay. So, again, this is looking pretty good from that point of view. It's giving us more information about the product itself secure steel clasp okay reference to minus the clasp earlier we've got now got a secure steel clasp we know that it's going to be strong it's not going to um sort of deform over time um copper is a soft product as you know the soft um material uh, and that could potentially um if if the clasp was made of copper that would know, potentially break okay so this is not bad i would actually um change up the bottom one and, and add in that guarantee and, and warranty. Um, Andy's asking, uh, would I use up all 200 characters in my title? Uh, I would get cl as close to that as possible. Yes, I would. This next session, let's have a look at images. So we have nine images to play with, or oh, Amazon give us the opportunity to load up nine images so the main drawback of buying products online as you know is you can't get that touchy feely sensation okay you, you can't physically touch your monitor and think oh you know what yeah that's soft that's hard that's it's like this you, you just can't do it so it's difficult to work out the quality how heavy it is how it looks and stuff like this you know when i'm talking about how it looks how it looks like when you're using it, if it's a, something you wear you know it, it's going to be quite difficult to do that so your images have to provide that sensory experience for your potential customers. Okay, you need to be able to to put that into words, um, and and the images it's, it's quite difficult to put it into words, but the images can tell um, a lot about the product itself. So let's have a look at uh, what we got here. So your main image. We're talking about the main image now. Okay, this is the one that shows up in the product search results. Make it a good one. No, don't make it a good one. Make it the best one you can. Okay, make it the best one you can. Um, one that stick out for me is this, this product here. Yeah, it, it's huge. It's big. All right. Um, it's good. The, these are good. This, this is. They're all pretty good. This one's too small. Okay. This one's too small. It's too small. Okay. These ones here are too small. Okay. You, you need to be able to fill that screen up as much as you can. You know, make yours pop out of the screen when people are looking at it. Now, a lot of these devices are, or products are actually purchased on mobile devices. You need to fill that screen up as much as you can with your product, okay? Let's have a look at the main criteria. 
make your image a thousand by a thousand pixels and make the image fill the space as much as possible. Get rid of all of the white space around it. You know, make it as big as possible. Now, a thousand by a thousand um, pixels is because once you load that up, Amazon give you that opportunity. If you hover over the image, it will have that zoom in feature. Okay, if it's less than a thousand by a thousand, you won't get that zoom in feature. So make sure it is at least that. Um, it needs to be on a pure white background. If you don't know how to do that, there are plenty of services out there that can do that for you. Fiverr.com, for example, um, just send it out there and someone will actually work on your image and remove the white, um, background it's on at the moment um, and they'll put it on a pure white background. It must not contain badges or text. I'm talking about your main image here, just the main image. So you've got nine images. We're talking about the first one, the main image. Okay, it must not contain badges or text, and it must not be an action shot. When I'm talking about an action shot is for a copper bracelet, for example, it should not be, uh, the image must not be the copper bracelet on a wrist using a hand or a model, something like that. Okay, it just needs to be the product itself. Let's have a look at some examples. Right. I, was, uh, I was just searching around. I couldn't find any really, really bad ones, a copper bracelet. So I went into where I knew I could find some bad ones. Um, and this is, a, this is a pretty pretty bad example, a good example of a bad bad image. This is the main image. Okay, it's the main image. So we've got some crappy um, text here. There's a woman assuming that's uh, an instruction manual. It's all crumpled up. And it's taking up a lot of space on the on the page. You can see this is a handheld. Um, I can't read any of this information here. I've got no idea what that's saying. I'm just about make out the CE mark there, so I know it's safe to use in Europe. But that that's about it. I've got a couple of extra bits here. Um, or, or you know, what is it? You know, it, it's very difficult to actually understand what this is. So if I'm in the market to buy um, a handheld drill or something like that. Would I go with this? No, I'd probably skip straight past this one. Let's have a look at another one. Now we're talking. Right, this is basically the same scale, right? So what I've done is I pulled up these listings on my on my monitor and I basically took a screenshot of the perimeter of the image, all right? And I then pulled up this next one, so it's exactly the same dimension from a screenshot point of view. Now, you can see the difference here between these two images. The one on the right is a killer image. It's a hero shot, right? It's great. It pops out of the screen. It's got no white space, top and bottom, left and right, okay? It fills the screen. It, the vibrant colors. I can read the read the text on the, on the product itself, black and deck out. I can see some numbers around here, around the talk ring. Um, on the left-hand side, to be fair, that's... Uh, that's a pretty poor effort. Don't make your main image like this. Make it like the one on the right. Secondary images. Let's look at the secondary images, okay? Like any color background you like. Do whatever you want, okay? Go to town on these, okay? Have a good lifestyle image showing the product being used. Now, what I mean by lifestyle product, um, on the copper bracelet, for example, I'll show you an, an example later. But have the copper bracelet on a model, okay? This is where you can have that. If you're, if you're selling a blender, okay, have an image where you've got your housewife or, or, or even anybody, okay? It could be me, not the best model in the world, I must admit, but it could be me in the kitchen with my hands on the products with a blending, some strawberries and mangoes, okay, which I've picked out on my back garden. Okay, that's a lifestyle image. Okay, have that, use it because it shows the product in use. You've got to be able to convince people that this is the right product, and they could do that by imagining how it's being used. Okay, it's really important to make the images as high quality as possible. Whatever device you're using, whether you're using your mobile phone, whether you're using a uh, your camera, get it on the highest setting you can to make sure you're getting the best quality images that you can. Photo editing to add text to badges is okay now. 
Okay, not on the first image, not on the main image, but you can put it all over there. Voted best product 2017. Make sure you get yours in 2018 because it will sell out. You can put all of those on infographics to highlight benefits and features. So you've got your product, you've got your image, right? You're now going to add arrows and text. Okay, easy, whatever it is, button. Um, easy to use clasp. Extra strong magnets. Uh, this is the place to actually highlight those additional benefits. And you can do that very easily by an infographic. Again, if you don't have the skills to do this, subcontract it out. Upwork, Fiverr, some of these other places. Very, very easy to do that. So no excuse. So let's have a look at some examples of secondary images. Uh, this is our drill again. This is our black and, and, black and decker drill. Okay, we've got someone here using it, and they're going to be adding a screwdriver tip to that. So I can see, and I can see the size of the product now. Um, I can see in relative terms the size of the product to the guy's hands. I can see how easy it use, is used to use. Um, so that's pretty good. Here's our copper bracelet. Okay, so we've got a nice-looking model. Okay, and we can see our copper bracelet over here, um, and that's looking really cool. I like that. So what that's allowing me to do now is see the size of the product on a person. Okay, so if I was going to be looking at this product and I was going to wear it for me, I'd probably think it's, I'd probably want a slightly bigger one. You know, I've got big wrists. So I've, no, that, that's probably that's probably okay for the wife or the girlfriend or whatever. Um, but for me, I would want to be looking for something else. So it allows you to actually understand that sensory aspect with respect to size now okay because you can't touch it you can't feel it so you need to put that across and you can do this in your secondary images so i've got a few more okay infographic this is a product right okay but it's got this is a really busy image but what it's telling us is a little bit more information okay what it comes with package contents include all of this stuff Right, this is a woo music device, okay, and it gives us a lot of information on this particular image. This is an infographic, it's more information with some graphics, okay. Resistance bands or fitness bands, okay. We're talking about badges now, premium quality, 100% guaranteed, okay, new version, okay. So, and we've got uh, the product down here with the with the brand printed on it and again it's a really sharp image it's, it fills the screen uh, and it shows what the product is in use okay great secondary image in this next section we're going to be talking about descriptions okay so your description is a place to add more detail about the product here we have 2,000 characters to use. Let's use them. Add the features and benefits as well as describing how the product works. Okay, so if you've got um, your copper bracelet, for example, you could actually say, you know, it's like, this is how it fits on. Um, don't forget how, how to maintenance. Make sure you look after it correctly and, and basically describe how to clean the product. Do that in description. That's the place for the description. Okay, not in the bullet points, not in the title, add that information in the description. Okay, so creating your description, this is the area where you can really describe in detail what the product is, explain the benefits in more detail, and highlight some of the features as well. Okay, this is the place to put, you know, these are, these are strong magnets. If you don't know anything about it, it's 3,900 or whatever it was. Gauss. Gauss is the strength of magnet scale. Okay, not in, not in the bullet points, not in the title. Put it in the description. Okay, and it allows you to convince the buyer that this is the product that's right for them. I always put ask for the sale. Okay, I don't put that in. I'm just saying it's like you you need to put in that and like click buy now. Okay, tell the potential buyer what to do. Okay, 
because there's a, there's a higher chance that you've got a converting listing if you're actually telling them, guiding them all of the way. And the last thing they see is like buy now. They go, oh, yeah, buy now. I'll go and buy it now. Which if you haven't got in there, they're potentially just going to walk away and continue procrastinating. Make sure you use plain, simple English so people can read it and understand it. Format the description so it's easy to read. Okay, and you can do this by using simple HTML code. Can I do HTML code? Nope, I've got absolutely, well, I have good, a little bit idea because I've been doing it for a while, but I'm not a coder. Um, I, don't, I don't, you know, I couldn't comfortably sit down and do some HTML code of my description. I, I, I just couldn't do that. Okay, but you're allowed to do that, and I'll tell you how to do that in a minute. So this is copy and paste from one of the one of the listings that we saw earlier. This is their description. Would I read this? No. If I was a potential buyer, I would skip this. I wouldn't even bother because it's hard work right, to read a big block of text like this. It's very, very difficult to do that. I'm not going to waste my time doing it. I just, I'm just not. Okay, regardless of whether it's a really cool product and it's got some great information in here, it's just um, it's just a pain. I, I'm just not going to waste my time reading this. So let's take this and see what we can do with it. Okay, so this very, very same thing. Let's just see if we can make it look better and easier to read. Okay, so what do I use? Bearing in mind that I'm not one for sitting down to writing my own HTML. So I would go to, let me show you. Let me zoom in so you can see where this is. And I can put this in, uh, in the chat as well. It's word2html.net. Okay. Where I go, that is my go to place. It's an online, um, it's an online tool. So, what I would do is just basically copy all of my text that I saw earlier in the left hand panel and then start to manipulate it. Okay, so let's have a look. So, what I would do is, um, I've now copied all of my information or all, all of that text that we saw earlier into the left hand panel. Um, I want to want to make the this the top section here stand out so I've, I've put a um line break in there in other words i've hit the enter key um let, let's make this section a little bit bigger so i've highlighted the first few words there that first sentence and i've made the the font bigger i've made it bold so it stands out i've also highlighted some keywords here in bold okay anti-inflammatory arthritis pain Another line break. In other words, I'll hit enter here again. And, and I've, what I've added, I've added a few bullet points further down. So I haven't spent too much time on this. I just wanted to show you how to actually get through this. Okay. As I'm doing that, it's automatically creating the HTML code on the right hand side. Once I'm happy with what I've got here on the left hand side, okay, what I'll do then is copy this code. I would then add that code into the back end of my listing. Let's have a look see what it looks like. Did we make it read a little bit better? Well, this is exactly the same text as what that block text was earlier. I think it looks a little bit better. I would spend a little bit more time on it if it was going to be in my listing, but you can see now that it was quite easy with that simple online tool to make that simple, right, long block text look a little bit better and read so much better, okay? So do that. Use simple HTML code to make your description look and read a lot better, okay? So you can do that. And I think this is looking a lot easier to read. You know, you can scan through this. You can start to understand it. I'd clearly spend a little bit more, more time on it, but you can get the idea. You know, we've got our bullet points down here. And why, how did I do that? Simple. You just like add your bullet points down here because you can see all of your aspects here. You've got um, sort of different font you can use. You've got um, different uh, sort of sizes. You've got your bullet points and stuff like this. Okay. 
So that's all good. That looks pretty cool. I like that. So let's review where we were on the tools that we used throughout here. Now, talking about tools, every business needs tools, regardless of what it is. If you've got a dentist, you know, you wouldn't be expected to bring your own tools along. You would expect the dentist to have the correct tools for the job when you go there. Okay. If you're a carpenter, if you're a car mechanic, right, you don't go to work without any tools. You would have your own set of tools in order to do the job and do the job correctly. This business is no different. Okay. You need to invest and you need to invest in yourself. You need to invest in the business. And the best way to do that is using tools. Tools allow you to do the job better, easier, more accurately. Okay. Like I said earlier, okay, the main tool used throughout this training has been the AZ Optimizer. I'll give you a link for that shortly if you're interested. Other tools we reviewed were Sonar for keyword selection. And I've just shown you the, the um, word to HTML.net that I use for the description. Okay. So if you're interested in the Optimizer, um, this is basically what it does. Um, it's the most accurate way to verify indexing on the market. It's got an indexing checker. Okay, so once you've got your listing up and running, you can check to see what keywords have been indexed by the A9 algorithm and which ones are not. And you can then manipulate the listing to make sure you, those that are not indexed get moved up. In other words, if you want a keyword to index and it's not being indexed, mate, you need to put it where it's going to be indexed, i.e. in the title or in the bullet point somewhere. The description does not get indexed, by the way. Know that Amazon, Amazon recognizes your product. Now, you can do that by simply running some of these analytical tests inside the, um, in, in the optimizer. Okay. And part of that is the indexing tool. And you can check this as many times as you want. It is the number one tool on the market at the moment for listing optimization. It gives you a ton of information. It gives you all of that help. It allows you to do all of the keyword research. Once you've got your listing done, it allows you to, to optimize it further and further optimization as you're moving forward through your business. Okay. Scan this. That's a um, direct link to our, our website, my contact details. If you're interested in buying the optimizers, Optimizer, if you do get that, um, give me a shout. I will sit down with you just to make sure that you understand how to use it such that you're comfortable using the tool for your business. There's no point in buying the tool if you don't use it. And you think, oh, blind, what a waste of money. No, this is a great tool. I highly recommend it. I use it on all of my products all of my clients products that i'm looking after as well we're using this all the time it is the go-to tool at the moment sonar right if you're interested in getting it, this is a free one it's just the link to the free um if you're interested in it's, it's provided by selix selix is an overall um what, what it does it looks after your account Okay, so in the back end of your account, um, if you if you uh, sort of use Selex on this, it will give you a health optimization. It will, it will give you um, how much you spend on PPC. It's basically the back end optimizer, not optimizer, but um, it's account overview tool. Okay, but Sonar is a great little tool, as we saw, um, and it gives you free research. So those of you who haven't got my contact details or our contact details, um, Basecamp, if you're not in the Basecamp, join the Basecamp. Um, all of these listings go up there. All of the information um, goes up in the Basecamp. Uh, YouTube channel, if you're not in the YouTube channel, you should be. Subscribe. Um, we've got a ton of information coming through. Um, Rob and I did record probably about 300 videos um, over the last few years. Um, some of those have not even been released yet. Uh, we're planning on releasing some of those and some fantastic information on there um two emails you can get hold of me here um no problems and obviously the website 
If you're not familiar, go onto the website. There's a ton of free information on there. Uh, it's a free course on how to find a product, um, for example. Okay. So thank you very much uh, for listening. I hope you got some information from that on how to optimize your listing. Uh, we will be back same time next week. Um, so if you want to contact me in the meantime, just give me a shout. Um, on Facebook, I am Phoebe Adams, in brackets, Paul Adams. Um, but uh, email me. Uh, and I'll come back to you, leave a message in the group chat somewhere um, on the Facebook group, and I'll come back to you. All right, team, thanks very much. I hope that was right. If anybody wants to come down and ask any questions, now's the time. Uh, let me give you the link for that. There. Um, so if you want to come down, I shall hang around for a few minutes. That's not a problem, but I will stop recording now. So, but I will... I'll stay stay around so we can chat offline. In the meantime, thanks guys. Happy selling and keep taking that one step forward.